most times, the more things or situations change, the more they return. They remain the same. Despite efforts of, by successive governments, the monster of fuel scarcity has refused to be tamed in Nigeria. Long queues at filling stations and hike in pump price of petrol and transport fares are hallmarks of agony that residents of Lagos and Abuja are contending with. As the scarcity persists, petroleum marketers increase the pump price from 165 naira to 180 naira per liter and more. In a statement, the Secretary of Lagos State Depot of Independent Market, Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, that's Ipman Akin Balogun, said there's no way they can sell petrol less than 180 naira per liter with the current situation. Let's give you some updates on this situation. The crowd, the confusion and frustration it brings, and now normal sight at petrol stations within the city of Lagos. This is in contrast to the situation at some other stations. Though the product is not being sold here, black marketers have taken over the business. On seeing the camera, we could not speak with them, but we learned the price is more than 70% higher than the regulated price of 165 naira per liter. Three days into the scarcity in Lagos, economic activities are already reflecting the harsh reality as many commuters are stuck with no transportation in sight. When I was coming to my house, to my house, I live in Ayege. This one I spent 400 naira instead of 200 naira. The issue of money from my Ayege to Ikeja, 200. From Ikeja to Ajota, it's 200. How long are we going to continue with this? So government has to do something, something very fast. This country, we are tired about this country. I go so many few stations of them in the same queue I'm facing. So I've been the one around the uh, uh, Ikeja, the same thing. So uh, we are, what we are seeing now is like no fair or let the open up tell us that there is no fair, then we will know there is no fair, we will go and pack our car. For years now, scarcity of petroleum products have become a mainstay in the life of the nation. There is widespread belief that the frequent scarcity is deployed to further increase the price of the product. One thing that we do badly in this country is we do not know how to disseminate information to people. You know, at least once you communicate to the people out there, they will prepare their mind and they will have maybe alternatives. But here we are, everybody woke up on Friday and the next thing we saw, queues all over the place. Uh, I've already used almost one and, a half, one and a half hours here now without seeing anything to buy. I want to buy fuel for my car. There is no drop of uh, fuel in my car now. The sad reality now is no one knows when this crisis will abate or when life as we know it will come back. The frustration is palpable and many believe hope is lost for the country. Theophilus Ilama, TVC News, Lagos. Sam, like an hour ago, I bought, I filled my tank at the Bovas filling station, Ujodu, but I can't use that as a yastic for everywhere in Nigeria. So, so for some weeks, we saw the scarcity subsiding in Lagos metropolis. But Abuja is still problematic since that contaminated form came you know, into circulation. Right. So right now we are seeing it might be easing out in you know Lagos, part of Lagos, the yeah. part of Lagos, but it will be dangerous to use that as a yardstick. Absolutely, Ayo, you're correct because um, Lagos is is in focus because it remains the country's uh, commercial uh, nerve center, same as Abuja. But I, I tell you that if you venture beyond Lagos and Abuja to um, some sections of the country, especially the southeast, we still have these you know, challenges, and also in the north. Uh, and, that's, and that's because we have you know, uh, disruptions in, in, the supply, in the supply system. Okay, what we have been told you know, um, at the moment is that um, NMPC says it has enough stock, but um, the independent marketers say the cost of doing business you know, has gone astronomically high that you know they, they can't they can't continue to play uh, charity uh, as it were because they have you know cost you know to recover you know things like um, cost of operations diesel you know moving moving the diesel and moving the uh, petroleum product and, and all that stuff so that's that's what we're, uh, the challenge that we face at the at the moment and we hear that um, the government is making promises you know through its agencies to deal with the issue of subsidy in terms of bridging the cost 
you know, of moving these products from the depots to you know, critical sections of, uh, of the country, especially, especially the north. Um, the last time you know, I followed the news, we're told that the government is offering, about, I think, 10 naira per litre or something like that to, to 20 naira. So I think that issue is being resolved. And um, the, the, the ease, I mean, the, the easing out of, the, of um, the queue in Lagos might just be a reflection of the fact that some consensus or some agreement you know, are being reached. And that's because the, the independent marketers and the other major marketers are, are probably um, receiving products. And that's why we are finding some you know, um, ease in the this, in this system. But I tell you, we, we can't continue to, you know, uh, to pretend that all is well. We have global disruptions as well. And these things are beginning to impact you know, on the local economy. The, the solution to this would be just to ensure that we, we, have, we increase our capacity to refine these products locally so that the cost of you know, um, importation will be reduced. And then the cost of uh, also doing business will be, will be within the tolerable region so that those um, who are supplying you know, uh, these products to the market um, are not made to play for the Christmas because they have to run their businesses sustainably. Internationally, it has not been you know, something that is easy in the US right now. They are facing the same crisis. In the UK, they are facing the same crisis. Inflation um, and um, increase in the uh, price of um, petroleum products. Well, because well, the international market. Well, I think uh, in as much as uh, we are members of the international community, we are also playing within the international community economic system. There is something that we have to know in such other organized countries, organized developed nations. They have many other options of transportation. They have tram, they have underground railway system, they have a lot of systems that people can use. You can stay in UK for probably 10 years without knowing how to drive a car. So, but here, 90% of our public transportation is basically on road transportation. Right. For instance, you mentioned about Lagos, there are crises always have, because 70% of the fuel that is used every day in Nigeria, they use it in Lagos for obvious economic reasons. So I think the problem is that we have to, our leaders have to be more visionary in our planning system. Because the cost of doing business, the hyperinflation we have in Nigeria, may be enough reasons for the independent marketers to say that, look, we cannot continue to increase our running cost while we are selling at the old price. Right. The moment the running cost is on the higher side, they will reduce their profits and their capability of remaining in the business. So it is natural that when you take in a stock of uh, about 10,000 liters at 160,000 naira, and your own margin is 5 naira, by the time you exhaust that source, they ask you to come and pay one, 170 naira. You may not have enough money to stock again. So one is not making excuse for them, but we have to know that the hyperinflation we have in Nigeria today is an excuse for all other organs to begin to fix price as they want. So I think basically, we should stop all this idea of uh, one day, one problem. The basic solution to our problem is that we have a government that promised to bridge four refineries in 2015. Between 2015 and now, they have not been able to even maintain the four ones that they have. I think until we have our own refinery, basically, eh, we are supposed to be enjoying from the uh, face off between Iran and uh, between Russia and Ukraine. But the reverse is the case because the more other players pay more money for our crude. The more our people here will also have to pay for refined petroleum products that is imported. And what is the value of the Naira to the dollar today? We import most of those things. There's a limit to which government can also subsidize, except, of course, they are not going to make their gain. Remember that we are also borrowing money to pay salary. We are borrowing money to finance our budget. So all these things taken together, I think the best thing for government is to have definite plan of refinery. Until we do that, in the next five years, we will continue to have this experience. I'm telling you, I, do, I don't know when Dangote refinery will come on stream. As earlier, it, it was supposed to be June this year. But if it doesn't come on stream the next six months, one year, which means this thing will continue. So the best thing is, I don't know. So the onus is on yeah, government now to do something. Looking at it, looking at it, I don't know how long the federal government will sustain this Subsidy. 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 It's like postponing the evil day. Uh, they, and if you look at what we are really putting into the country, and you look at the infrastructural deficit we have, and it's like a catch-22 situation. 
if this subsidy is removed, some people are saying that we'll start buying from 280 something per uh, <laughs> liter. Will be what is happening in the international market right now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting development, really, because um, uh, we're basically playing the ostrich, you know, burying our heads in the, in the sand and exposing our behind. I, interestingly, we have um, a, a president who suddenly has become a born again. He recalled that not too long, he told us that um, Totally was, was a scam. And today he is um, the main driver. You no, know, you have seen the reality. You do you understand? No, when so, he was outside, he yeah, so, felt so. But that, that tells <laughs> you that there is some gap in understanding of the economic realities that we face. All right? I mean, switching over from it's a scam to being the one trying to convince Nigerians that, after all, other countries you know, uh, subsidizing uh, the supply of uh, petrol to the economies and all that, mm. just tells you that uh, we need to be a, a bit more, uh, uh, show depth in our understanding of our economic realities. The fundamentals don't really look good, and that's the truth. You, you can, I mean, you, you don't have the capacity to, to refine these products, and so we import. That's the reality that we face, and when you import, you are confronted with international prices. And then government says, we are going to do that, but we are going to, you know, uh, pay the difference so that our people don't suffer. But for how long? We can pretend that we can carry it. The last time I checked, we were told we had spent over four trillion naira. Mm. That is money that could have gone yes. into some other, you know, um, uh, infrastructure development. So, but for how long? Because even when we try to compare the Nigerian economy with, you know, with the rest of Europe and the Americas, you just find that these are two different situations. So it's, it's, I think that there's a problem when we begin to argue that because it's been done elsewhere, then we should also you know, um, um, make subsidy in a 100% a a um, uh, policy. So I think that we, we need to okay, confront Sam, our I reality. I have my first caller. Uche is calling us from Inewin and Nambra states. Thank you for joining us, Uche. Thank you for joining us, Uche. Uche, are you there? Yes. Good What's evening, the situation you? like in, in a week? Yeah, good evening. How are you? Good evening, uh, the panelists. Good evening. Yeah, and uh, good evening. This is uh, Uche uh, calling from Newi. Okay. I yeah, asked you about the fuel situation uh, in Newi. Um, well, my point uh, is very clear here. Yeah. You can't be certain of uh, removing subsidy. Hello? Oh, we lost each other. Now, speaking in terms of if a new government gets there and it decides the president, uh, the new president decides to put in of subsidy, you know, subsidizing for and Nigerians, can, do you see us? Do we have that purchasing power, or can we sustain buying it at competitive well, I, market Well, I think there's something that we have to get right. It says that we keep on talking about subsidy. We have always been removing it. When, by the time Abasha left in, 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 I think it was 20 million per liter. Today, it is 160. So they have been removing it, but they will continue removing it. We continue talking about subsidy in as much as we have no capacity to refine locally. Because what is the essence? When you buy fuel at the international market, you sell your crude at the international market. Today it is about 105 naira per barrel of crude oil. And those people that are selling refined products for you making more money are making more money of crude. So definitely, you are also importing from there. You are spending your limited foreign estate. Because we have a limited it's foreign estate to so import the fuel. So the issue of subsidy will continue to be there for as long as Nigeria cannot refine its products. We have to accept that one. So it's not a question of a government. If a government remove it tomorrow, if the price of oil in the international market should increase to $150, we will still continue talking about subsidy. So the, the antidote is to have the capacity to refine locally, have four refineries working at optimum capacity to supply at least we need an average of 200,000 uh, uh, barrels per day to service our local economy. Niger, their the refinery is about 150,000. 200,000 barrels per day, and they only need about 50,000 barrels per day to service their economy, which means the remaining 150,000 is for Nigeria. 
So what we're saying is that until we have the local capacity to refine what is needed to service our local economy, subsidy will continue to be there. I also think that there's, um, that there's a trust gap. Okay, let, let me take uh, um, Taiwo from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Taiwo. Thank you for hello. joining us. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Taiwo, yes, I can hear you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, okay. Yes, um, thank Go you. Go ahead, please. Uh, well done for the good job you're doing. Um, subsidy or no subsidy, where are the refineries that APC promised that they're going to give us one refinery every year? I have the manifesto here with me. They promise one refinery every year. And my next question is, who is the Minister of Petroleum? It is Major General Buhari. We are begging you, please, Major General Buhari. You know, you, you promised. You promised to make life easier for Nigerians. Why are we suffering? Why are Nigerians suffering this much? You're in charge of the petroleum uh, uh, um, um, sector. And you can see how people, uh, you know, people go to work. They're supposed to go straight home to relax. They're queuing up. Thank you for your contribution to Taiwo. Taiwo is saying, asking APC that he has a copy of the manifesto of APC, you know, saying that um, they will build one refinery per year. Uh, I can't yeah. verify that. I can't uh, verify that. It was then, a campaign promise. Mm, it was a campaign promise. Written in black and white. No, no, but I didn't see but it. He promises a promise. Yeah, but <laughs> but that, that promising you one refinery per year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the first four years. Because <laughs> no, no, no. that was the first 15. You know, but I mean, that, that, that brings that. Yeah, but that brings the question home. I was going to talk about the issue of trust, you know, uh, the gap and, and all that. And you know, the, the manifesto thing came up. So what what is the manifesto? Basically a promise, you know, a body of promises that we're going to do this when we're going to get into power and all that. Ayo, what I think is missing here is that the citizens appear to have lost faith in the integrity of the, those governing us, all right? So every government all over the world would always initiate policies. Some of these policies are going to be very painful to execute, all right? But the difference between what you get elsewhere and here is that we don't trust that our government is genuine enough with the kind of policies sincere. that they have initiated. They are not sincere enough. That's, that is the general perception. And so when government comes around and says, we want you to do this, the populace will simply react and say, no, we are not going to accept you because the promises you have made in the past, you have not, con you have not delivered on them. Okay. That's I what I think is missing here. We have Ade, uh, not Ade from London again. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you yes, hear good me? afternoon, Ade. Yes. Well, what I'm trying to, what I want to say is this. The federal government, the federal government, they don't care about the common people. That is the problem we are having in Nigeria. I don't suppose the subsidy. They should remove the subsidy. Use the money to care for common people. In UK, once you are 60 years old and above, you are entitled to free freedom pass. You can travel all the train, all the underground, the buses, everything free. That's what I've been using for many, many years. But in Nigeria, they don't have any opposition. You don't need to drive car here unless you are a young family, maybe just raising a baby or, or whatever. And people are like, oh, we don't need it. You use the bus, you use the train, it's free. So there's no congestion on the road. Nigeria federal government should care for the common people. Remove the su subsidy, constantly remove it, and use the money for welfare, social welfare for common people, poor people. That's Thank you, Adi. Adi from UK. Thank you. But look. Spend more on infrastructure, drop the subsidy according to a day, and concentrate on the masses. Well, <laughs> program that we affect them. But uh, let me ask you a question. We have 36 states in Nigeria. And I'm not sure whether 30 of those states can pay pension to those people who retire at the age of 60. So if you cannot pay pension for those people who have worked for 30 years, how can you provide them with social amenities? You understand what I'm saying? When people who work for 35 years, 30 years cannot even assess their pension, and you are saying that that government will provide their... Because those people must have worked for 35 years. Yet, in Ogu State or any other state, it will take you 10 years for you to calculate your pension. 
most of them will have been dead by then. So we have a lot of things that is wrong with the system. And until we have sincere leaders, like you said, there's a deficit trust in all aspects of Nigerian life. And it is apparent because, for instance, let us talk of subsidy. At any point in time, when there's a negotiation with the labor union, they will take, the federal government will tell us that they will use these different subsidies to build a railway, to build a, to buy many buses, to cushion the effect. Shopee. Which effect? Shopee, everybody. We have, we have, they have named it, made any name to them, except in the Lagos Ibadan rail line that was built. Here you go. Tell me whatever, whatever, whatever uh, uh, cushion effect that government has been able to provide from the series of subsidies that have been removed. Mm. Since probably, I've been hearing of subsidies probably since 1989. Yeah, so, but you know, again, again, I talk about the crisis of confidence. If we all remember what happened in the very early days of this administration, when it had to take that very painful step of removing subsidy, the, 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 the uproar wasn't such that the government couldn't manage because there was that initial connection between the people and the administration I mean, where it was like, yeah, expecting. fine, this man, this man cares. We trust this government to do what is needful. All right? I'm not and sure they that did there the was... The unprecedented. Yeah. By I mean, moving it from... Do you understand? <laughs> and the heavens... And, <laughs> heaven and the heavens didn't... Down to 100. Right? So, <laughs> what happened thereafter? Uh -huh. And that was because at that point in time... A this, 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 element this, of trust. The element of trust. So we have this crisis of... The body language thing was Confidence that has gotten worse. We don't even trust them anymore to do what is right. So I, I think there is this leadership element to it. And we can't run away from it. All right? Every government... Wherever you know you can't find them, would always take these very very painful steps. And citizens, if they are convinced sufficiently, would buy into it. And that is what is missing here. All right.